Hey guys, welcome back to Dark Souls, episode 11. On the last episode, we completed this area called The Depths, and now we're going to be heading even further below. So, we got a couple of items last time, after we killed the Gaping Dragon. First, before I um, speak about those, I want to revisit an item we picked up before we fought the Gaping Dragon. Which is the sewer chamber key. So if you read the description of this item, it says, In any community, a few bad apples are sure to exhibit insatiable greed. If they were turned undead and banished to the depths, would they reconsider their ways? Use this key to see for yourself. This is the key that actually opens this chamber here. Given that description, you might be thinking, Oh, there might be a lot in here, but there's only a bonfire. I say only a bonfire, but bonfires are pretty important. What's interesting to note here is the fact that clearly they did not change their ways. Clearly they did not repent. What they did instead was they made a home here. They just adapted to their new situation. So a little quick explanation or my interpretation of that. Um, Let's go ahead and look at the items we got. So let's start with the keys, because keys are always useful. We got the Blight Town key, which is where we'll be heading next. Open door opens door in depths leading to Blight Town. That's probably the door by Dom Hall. Key to Blight Blight Town from the depths of the undead burg, swallowed by the gaping dragon. As its name suggests, Blight Town is a place of great pestilence. Even the polluted inhabitants of the depths are aware of its dangers, and built this mighty door in hopes that they could remain safely separated. So even the people of the depths, or the denizens of the depths, don't want to be in Blight Town. One last thing. Uh, actually, where was it? Did we get... This is what we got. Dragon King Great Axe. <laughs> Requires 50 strength. This axe, one of the rare dragon weapons, is formed by the tail of a gaping dragon, a distant, deformed descendant of the everlasting dragons. The axe is imbued with a mystical power, to be released when held with both hands. That sounds cryptic. Let's go ahead and equip it and see if anything happens. We don't even have the strength to hold it with two hands like this. Perhaps we'll come back and revisit this item once we have more strength. For now, we'll go back to this Y-hander, plus three. And did we get the soul of the Gaping Dragon? Unsure. No, we didn't. I felt like we got something. Could just be my imagination. Before we head down to Blight Town, I'm thinking we run back over to Firelink and speak to all the NPCs there. Also, let's hand in the ember we got or the coal we got to Andre Avastora, and I'll cut when I get back there. So we'll see you guys there. Hey, so while we're here, before we go back to Firelink Shrine, I just want to talk a little bit about the Lower Undead Burg and the Undead Burg in general. So, the reason why there are demons here, um, and the demons act as the bosses of the area, is that if you look closely at the environmental storytelling that's going on, they're sort of implying that demons somehow moved into this area from below, maybe through the depths or blight town, or came through other means and started attacking this place. The people who lived here, the, the undead, started to abandon it, and that's why it's populated with people who took up arms, um, either as soldiers or warriors or um, just dredglings to fight for the undead bird. I'm going to go ahead and see if the female undead merchant has anything to say. Oh, 
Yeah, I'll go ahead and buy a little bit of moss because uh, some of these could be important. Go ahead and buy five of those. She also sells humanity, but she only ho holds a um, a minimum number of these. She only holds about... Oh, wait. I think this is how much we hold. Never mind. <laughs> I'm, thinking, uh, I'm thinking of the other games where... Usually they only sell uh, items like these in limited quantity. This is the purging stone I was talking about. That's pretty expensive. Let's see if she has anything to say. She is absolutely right about that. Okay, she said this before. Let's go ahead and head out then. You can see here that we did take some damage, but we were able to pretty easily recover what we lost using the Ring of the Evil Eye. I'm going to go ahead and kill this rat here, and probably kill a couple more hollows, just so we're topped off on the way down. So we got a bit sloppy with the guy with the fire bombs. I keep thinking the hitbox of this sword is longer than it actually is, and there was about four times where I swung the sword to thinking that I would hit him, and I missed. I guess we can go ahead and take this off and speak with the NPCs here. There will be quite a few of them. Did you see them? The three young clerics headed for the catacombs to seek kindling. Kindling is the art of feeding bonfires. The poor young girl sent down into a tomb. What a terrible mission she is burdened with. Those sound like Petrus's friends. Oh, hello. Well, you certainly are keeping at it. Myself? I'm fine. Let's get started straight away. It's strange that Griggs knows about this. I wish to do what I can to locate Master Logan. I am aware of my shortcomings, but I cannot very well just sit around here and rot. Oh, do not worry. I have considered our relationship. I will only leave after I have taught you all the sorceries that I know. I shall count myself lucky if I manage to locate Logan. Or even return here in one piece. Over the course of this game, we'll be buying sorceries from Griggs just so that we can complete his questline this way. Let's go ahead and make some progress at this. We'll go ahead and buy Soul Arrow, Heavy Soul Arrow, Fall Control, Oral Decoy, and we'll leave the three of these for later. Two things are required for sorcery. First, you. Sec. Then. Oh. All right. That'll do it. That should help you on your journey. May we meet again. And over here... are Petrus' new friends. Well, I shouldn't say new, but they're new to us. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So... I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. I want to see if he has anything else to say. Oh, hello. Miracles, I presume? Yes, I know. Rhea is the youngest daughter of the good house of Thurland. Those young knights are her old schoolmates. But I'm not sure what to make of them. I'm afraid they may be a bad influence. What he told us is uh, pretty important nonetheless. I don't think we have the faith for any of these yet. Yeah, so never mind on that. Let's just see if he has anything else. Rhea is the youngest daughter of the good house of Thurland. Those young knights are her old schoolmates. 
But I'm not sure what to make of them. I'm afraid they may be a bad influence. Okay, so he just said that. Go ahead and leave then. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Let's go ahead and talk to these guys. Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Times are grim. The least you can do is look sharp. Don't you dare meet my lady like that. You might scare her off for good. <laughs> I think I look pretty fashionable myself, but if he says so. <laughs> this is kind of a, rec a recurring theme in the Souls games. A lot of times when they introduce multiple NPCs, one of them won't actually be able to speak. And they'll just speak in, in, in muffled sentences and stuff like this. It's probably uh, both serving as a joke and also because it's hard to write dialogue for multiple NPCs because then um, the order that you speak to them uh, can affect the way the player gains information and can also show that the game feels a bit artificial. Oh, you again. What business have you? I don't suppose we can help, though. We accompany my lady on her righteous mission. It is quite a chore, but I'm stuck with her, and Nico too. I can't very well abandon them now. This must be Nico. I wonder if this guy has anything else. Oh, it's you. We're to leave momentarily. The catacombs aren't exactly my idea of a good time, but what can one do? I do hope we meet again, rarely or not. Rarier knocks. That sounds like uh, it could potentially be uh, like um, a parting statement from people of Thurland. These are cool shields too. Their armor is also a bit cleaner and brighter looking than Petrus's armor, which is darker in all aspects. Oh, it's you. We're to leave the cat. Rarier. Let's see if Rhea has anything for us. You are undead as well. We've no time to fraternize. I have my mission and you no doubt have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. She's got some nice looking clothing on. She looks like uh, a pilgrim almost. But very noble, very uh, rich and wealthy. She's also very pretty. Did I not explain the urgency of our tasks? Or are you so uncouth as to lack such judgment? By the looks of you, I should think not. She doesn't want to speak to us because we're undead. Uh, that kind of implies to me that maybe in her past, given the way that the dialogue is written, that she used to look down on undead. But she's also... She's also barely respectful of us. She is respectful of us, though, because... She thinks that maybe we're, we lack judgment and we're uncouth, but then she looks at us and she thinks that we don't. I think she'll repeat that line if we say uh, if we uh, try to speak to her again. We can. Did I not explain the urgency of our tasks? Or are you so uncouth as to lack such judgment? By the looks of you, I should think not. Right. So, if you recall back to when we first uh, tipped Petrus off with some souls to gain some information, he spoke to us about the secret rite of kindling, which is the art of feeding bonfires humanity to become even more powerful. That's what these guys are going to do. They're headed to the catacombs, which we've heard about from some other NPCs, namely Andre and um, Don Hall. Hopefully they brought some divine weapons with them to keep those skeletons down. And by the looks of that, it seems like the catacomb should be on the other side of this building, past that cemetery. Maybe we'll run into them later. And over here is Laurentius, the NPC we rescued. Before we speak to him, coming back over here. We no longer hear that snoring noise. I wanted to point something out about this statue. Unlike the other statues holding the... Um, holding the baby or the child this one doesn't have a crown i recently watched a video called um i think rediscovering the lore of dark souls and it was about the timeline it posed some really interesting theories about this statue and the other ones although i will still like to talk about i, I will still talk about what i thought 
these statues are depicting uh, when I when I get to it. Let's go see what Laurentius has to say to us. Well, I see you made it out. Yeah, I, I made it out safely too. I have my pyromancy in a great swamp, so I can use the mountains with a bit of care. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I can share my spells with you. I think you have a knack for it. All you need are the materials. I'll be pleased to help you. Ah, and unless you find the magic's unsavory. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Here, first take this. Gives us the pyromancy flame, which, uh, if you recall, when we rescued him, his hand was one of his hands was glowing, and that was why. But his hand is no longer glowing. I think he just gave us his pyromancy flame. A flame from the great swamp. Now you're a fully fledged pyromancer. Well, let's get started right now. I love Laurentius. He is uh, cheery. He's 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 written to be considerate. He's a really cool guy. So, unlike miracles and sorcery, we have this modify equipment option here. And we can actually upgrade the pyromancy flame. Let's go ahead and do that. So, I'm going to upgrade it to plus three. And the pyromancy flame is separate from catalysts and um, talismans in the fact that it's upgradable like a weapon. Let's see what he has to say to us before we purchase any pyromancies. Pyromancy is the art of casting fire. Produce flame, then channel it, just as our ancestors did. A pyromancer must be in tune with nature herself. My home, the Great Swamp, is an abundant store of nature. You will understand one day. It only takes time. So he's from the Great Swamp. If we remember back to the character creation, um, it seemed like people from the Great Swamp were looked down upon uh, for their ugliness and perceived savagery. Pyromancy has a, well, rather primitive aspect to it. It messes poorly with advanced culture, and pyromancers are considered rather unsavory, which is fine as I never got along with anybody anyway. So. For me, turning undead didn't change a thing. <laughs> so all the characters in this game that we've met so far who are devoted to mastering an art or a craft, like Andre, Laurentius, uh, Rickert, Griggs, and even Master Logan, who we've heard about but we haven't met, they all seem to uh, be indifferent to the fact that they're undead now, which is pretty cool. If you remember back to the introduction cutscene to this game, that set up the world. You'll recall that there was a character called the Witch of Isleth and the Daughters of Chaos was uh, were her daughters and she was holding a flame in her hand. She's uh, very closely linked to pyromancy. In fact, each one of those lords are linked to something. Um, when it comes to magic, you have Seath. It's clear that dragons are, are, are related to sorcery by the dragon school and descriptions and so on. Gwyn seems to be related to miracles, and, and the gods seem to be related to miracles, and so the Witch of Isleth and the Daughters of Chaos are uh, the link to pyromancies. The pyromancer's flame is, is a part of his own body. The flame develops right along with his skill. When I gave you that flame, I gave you a part of myself. Please take good care of it. Ah. So that's what we're doing when we're upgrading the flame. We're, um, we're developing it by feeding it souls. Just as we develop our own self by feeding us, feeding, uh, by getting souls. Let's go see what he has to say. I mean, what he has um, for sale. I, I don't know why, but my speaking skills have just degraded uh, really <laughs> a lot ever since, um, ever since about like a year ago. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Anyways, he sells Fire Orb, com Combustion, Iron Flesh, Flash Sweat, Fireball. So let's go see what each of these do. Pyromancy, which improves upon Fireball. Hurl Fire Orb. The Flaming Fire Orb explodes upon impact, causing Fire Splash damage in a spectacle, which seems to symbolize the strength of the Fire Manipulating Pyromancers. So, let's go look at Fireball then. 
Standard Pyromancy of the Great Swamp, Hurl Fireball. The fire damage caused by fireballs makes them effective against corporeal beasts and undead who by nature fear flame. Undead who by nature fear flame. It's funny because undead are gravitated towards flames as well uh, through the bonfires. Flash Sweat. Pyromancy of Carmina who harness the power of flame to actualize the inner self. Intense sweating reduces flame damage. Carmina, the most accomplished pupil of Salaman the Master's Pyromancer, pioneered new directions for the art of pyromancy. Iron Flesh. So this is also a, from Carmina. Iron Flesh boosts defense and resilience. Use of this pyromancy requires caution as the caster becomes exceedingly heavy and unable to move freely. And then there's Combustion. Create powerful flame in hand. One of the most basic pyromancies for this very reason the flame thus created is fierce. So we don't need any int or faith to use any of these. We just need attunement slots, which is something that I think is really good about the first Dark Souls game. I'm going to go ahead and buy Fireball. I'll get combustion as well, since it's cheap. Goodbye then. Come back if you find anything new. Thank you. Let's go speak to the crestfallen warrior. Did you see her? That virtuous little maiden, complete with followers in tow? They're probably going straight to pillage graves. I've heard enough about the lady for a lifetime. The second NPC who tips you off about um, Rhea and her knights, I suppose. So if you really did not go and check out Petrus and you spoke to, you know, the Crestfallen Warrior or Griggs, then one of them would have told you. Let's see if he has anything else. Have you been to the ruins of New Londo below? Just head down the stairs and take the lift. It's certainly worth a visit. It was once an undead city. You may find a clue or two, unless the ghosts find you first. <laughs> this is the first time that the Crestfallen Warrior expresses his interest in New Londo, which uh, will be important for later. Let's see if he has anything else. How did that nutty sorcerer make it back? Unexpected. But I suppose stranger things have happened. Commenting on Griggs. He, he was the one who actually told us that Griggs went missing. I wonder if he has anything to say about Laurentius. How did that old man make it back? Unexpected. But I suppose stranger things have happened. It's great that the Crestfallen Warrior is um, <laughs> blissfully unaware of our involvement in these cases of freeing these people. He can't even perceive the fact that someone else was able to help them. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. Okay. Let's see what you have to say, Lautrec. Oh. Hello. I'm considering a change of location. I have a rather pressing matter to attend to up above that keeper has served me well but enough with her <laughs> dude that that doesn't sound ominous at all really oh hello i'm consider i have a rather it's even the line that they put on repeat to help you think about it as you leave with that, let's go back up and speak to Andre. Give him the call. Just want to go ahead and comment on that statement I made earlier. So you can see there that if we look at this statue, it's different in that this woman is wearing a crown. Let's go ahead and look at these panels off to the side here too. The I, I I can make out a guy holding up some sort of orb this way. 
I think those are animals, sheep in the background. Usually pictures like these are indicative of harvests and sacrifices. They're both pointing towards a statue, which means that this is an altar of either sacrifice or offering, maybe a votive offering to uh, this god here. Bean pole. Yeah, I suppose it is. I just also, I want to make a quick comment about this elevator here. So what's cool about this elevator is that when you step on this panel, uh, you don't have to change your orientation. If you continue remaining forward, you'll come out through the other exit. They do that a lot with their elevators to make it seem less disoriented when you go up. With that, let's go ahead and speak to Andre. But before we do, let's go. Let's just kill some of these guys here to get our... Um, what am I trying to say? To get some health back. Get a Titanite shard for free. Fantastic. Head. Yes, sir. I'm thinking this episode is probably going to be too long if we go through Blight Town today. So I'm probably going to do something else. Maybe show off the co op this game. And because I'm going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take a rest at this bonfire here. Now with that, let's speak to Andre. Ah, why, that's a fine ember you have there. I could smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? Yeah. Magnificent. You won't be disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. Let's go ahead and reinforce our weapon. We don't have the Titanite charge to bring it up to plus five. Why don't we go ahead and buy some? Okay. Let's go see if he has anything else to say. Nope. Don't get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. Did I get the Divine Ember? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, okay. Before we help out, let's go ahead and put something on real quick, just because I want to make sure I have enough souls to level up. Okay, let's try to level up now. Oh yeah, plenty. Go ahead and increase our strength by one, and our... Oh, we actually can't increase our faith or intelligence. We are just shy. Regardless, I want to try and see if I can get myself summoned to show off the co-op mechanic. So I'm going to leave a white sign soapstone. Up by this bridge right here I just have to get a little bit further away from the bonfire I guess can I not use it in human form at all oh no I can't yeah. all right. you are an ass I'm going to go ahead and place it down here. And I'm going to walk around here. I'll probably cut the video if I don't get summoned and we'll go do something else. But I want to try to get summoned just to show off how the mechanic works. <laughs> it's a nice message. Hey, look! While we were while we were dicking around, we got the Balder armor. Let's go ahead and check that out. I think I hear something, but armor worn by the knights of the ancient kingdom of Balder. It is made from thick iron plates. Balder was the homeland of the Night King Rendell, but it came to ruin after a great many undead were spawned. 
That's some pretty cool looking armor. It does slow us down though a bit too much for my taste, so we'll go and put the leather armor back. So it doesn't seem like we're getting any summon signs here. Um, or rather, it doesn't seem like we're getting summoned here. It's a bit of a shame. I think it might have something to do with the fact that uh, we might be a little bit too high of a level for this place. There might not be anyone who is our level who is currently trying to challenge the boss of the area. With that, I think instead of doing that, we'll just head back over to... Did that say something different? Check your message. Oh, no one has raided it. God damn it. With that, I think we'll head back to the depths and we'll go speak to Dom Hall. We'll probably call it an episode and then go into Blight Town on the next one. See you guys there. Hey guys, so we went up to uh, the Undead Parish and we, when we came down, they're gone. I wonder if this has actually triggered any new dialogue, so I'm going to go ahead and try to speak to everybody again really quickly. Oh, hello. Well, you certainly are keeping at it. Myself, I'm fine. Two things are set then. Oh, goodbye then. Do st mm -hmm. I guess not. Let's go ahead and just level up real quick here. I think what we'll do is get two attunement slots. With that, we will attune some magic. On here, I think we will put probably Fireball. Let me go ahead and try it out. I'll go ahead and put my Pyromancy Glove on. And if we go ahead and just press the left bumper here, we can throw a Fireball. And I'm sure if we were locked on to something, it would hit it. It's over here. I'm going to hit path. Okay, let's go ahead and just get that back. And let's run up and maybe try this out. Look at that. Kills these guys really easily. Of course, these are the beginning areas, uh, beginning enemies of the game, so we'll take that with, uh, we'll take that for, oh shit, he can hit me from here. I really hate that guy. We can actually even move while we throw this. How do you like it? Damn it. Alright guys, so I'll see you guys in the depths. So now I want to show you guys something real quick before we touch this bonfire. Let's go ahead and see if we can trigger this guy. So let's try the fireball on him. Look at that. Kills him in one hit. Oh! You asshole. What I think I want to do is... Oh, look at that. That thing's really important. Oh, no. Now I can finally show off what this does. You see, that does a lot of damage. It has almost killed me. I'm just going to roll back here and... S this up. And maybe hit these guys with some fireballs? I'll just take care of this guy normally. But you can see they drop green Titanite shards. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. So we can use these to reinforce magic divine and fire weapons. Green Titanite imbued with special power. Run along here. 
And we got hit again. I think this might actually kill us. Oh, wow. You are so lucky we did not get killed by that. So right there, that's called an attunement circle. You might think it's a glitch because it looks a lot like the lock-on. But what it actually does is it makes miracles and pyromanties stronger if you cast them by him. Alright, so this guy's dead. Let's go ahead and take a rest here at the depths, and I will see you guys by Dom Hall. I mean it this time. Alright, so we're back. Let's go ahead and speak to this guy. Hi, Shimon. We meet again. Let's go buy something from him. Hmm, let's see. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't see anything here. Maybe if I buy some bolts from him? From arrows, some arrows. Hmm. Well, I'm certain we will make a good trade eventually. So I am willing to share some tips. The cursed ghost of New Londo are formidable foes. To place them, you will require special arms or a cursed body. The quickest way to be cursed? Try the bug-eyed lizards in the sewer. Desperate measures, to be sure. Okay, look at that. So he gives a tip because we bought some items from him. Thank you. I have this funny feeling we'll meet again soon. We'll make another funny trade, of course. So, I think he's waiting for us to buy his armor. That's what he's thinking of as a, as a, a good trade. But we can buy small things from him and he'll give us tips about things in the game, like uh, an easy way to get cursed to fight the ghosts. So... With that, I think we'll go ahead and open this door. Use the Blight Town key. Alright. And look at that. When we cross this area, we get a lighting change to indicate that... Oh, maybe we're in a new area. It's not very subtle. But it's a nice little effect. Alright guys, I think this video has gone on long enough. I think I'm going to cut it now. This has been Fahad Syed from Pixel Icons, and I will see you guys next episode.